Bonjour, this is Dr. Isabelle Amig, your host of Unabridged MD, where we provide you hope driven by science. And today I would like to discuss pseudogout. So pseudogout, as you can hear it, it sounds like gout, but it's pseudo, meaning that it's not exactly like gout. And the reason I'm talking to you about uh, this is that I recently came across a case of a very puzzling um, patient who had basically had a, quite a bit of joint pain and, and inflammation. And we the, the medical community was not able to make a diagnosis and we finally figured out that it was for the gout and is now treatment and doing so much better. And it's a pretty common uh, cause of joint pain. Uh, it's inflammatory and so I'd like to review with you how it presents and how you can treat it so that the next time you have some joint pain that's inflammatory, you can be like, hey, to your primary care physician, let's think of pseudo gout, okay? So, the first thing is that it's an it's an inflammatory arthritis. What do I mean by that? Is that it's a it's a joint pain that's usually worse in the morning, that's associated with some morning stiffness of more than 30 minutes. You have to do this for more than 30 minutes or with any joint that's involved, and that <clears throat> it uh, usually gets uh, better with. Uh, uh, exercise. So that's really the opposite of the mechanical joint pain, such as osteoarthritis. Uh, this one gets better with exercise. And <clears throat> the typical inflammatory arthritis would be gout or rheumatoid arthritis. And this is also where usually what happens is that we, um, uh, the crystal arthropathy, so gout and pseudogout are what we call crystal arthropathy because they have crystal that basically uh, deposit in the joint and cause this inflammation and that causes the pain. And that's why you're coming to see your rheumatologist. So in gout, you have uric acid that deposits. In pseudogout, you have calcium that deposits. So on x-ray, you can see, and, and uh, on x-ray, you're going to be able to see some deposit of calcium, but you have to look for it. And we'll talk about this. In terms of the presentation, pseudogout literally can almost affect the organs the same way that gout affects them. So for example, you may know that you can have a kidney stone due to gout. Well, you can also have kidney stones due to pseudogout. So when a rheumatologist asks you about the, your symptoms, usually they always ask you, do you have joint pain? Have you ever had kidney stones? And sometimes you're wondering, why are they asking me this? Well, that is the reason, is that inflammatory arthritis, and if you have a history of kidney stone, that makes us think of a crystal arthropathy. Now, another hallmark of a crystal arthropathy is that the way it presents. So if this is no pain, you're going to have sometimes like severe pain, you have a flare, and then it comes down, and then you have times where you have no pain at all, and then again, a pain, and then you have nothing. So the difference between a crystal arthropathy and an inflammatory arthritis that's chronic, such as um, rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis, the difference is that in between the episodes, you won't have any sort of flare. You can, but usually you have at least some time where you don't need anything and you have no pain, okay? And usually that's what happens. It's like you're asking for that moment. You're like, well, I know that at one point I had no pain at all without any treatment. And sometimes we don't need treatment and some other times you need treatment, okay? So <clears throat> to summarize, pseudogout usually, so you, uh, pseudogout is associated with calcium deposition, okay? And that is what causes the issue, whether it's in your joint, so that's going to cause uh, inflammatory arthritis that are severe uh, and that can be really impactful on your quality of life. And it can also deposit in the kidneys or in the, in the urinary tract, and that can cause donc, urinary stones, okay? Those are the things that we want to look at. In terms of the reason why you have pseudogout, yeah, why you may have pseudogout. So there are sometimes no reason at all, right? But before we can say that there is no reason at all, we have to look for secondary causes of pseudogout. The secondary causes of pseudogout are, um, so one of the first one is hemochromatosis. Don't worry, it's a handful, but it's basically usually people who have a genetic um, issue with their liver and that basically 
have too much of iron deposit in the liver. That iron causes an issue with the metabolism of the calcium, okay? So that's something. Then you can also look for parathyroid. And so the parathyroid that are on top of the thyroid right here um, can be overstimulated. So it can be overstimulated by itself. And that's actually sometimes a pseudogout is going to be the first symptom of hyperparathyroidism. Or it can be due to kidney. Uh, and we are really well done and there is this balance in our body and our body is always constantly trying to help, to uh, make us in balance. And what happens is that if you have a kidney disorder, a kidney uh, function that's not as good as uh, before, your parathyroid are going to go up because it's trying to adjust to the changes that's happening in your body. Okay, so you may have elevated a PTH if you have chronic kidney disorder. Okay. Uh, so those are like the main common, the, the, the main reason for uh, secondary causes of hyperparathyroidism. Sometimes you can have a thyroid disorder that's causing uh, um, hyper, uh, sorry, pseudo uh, gout. Uh, so you're going to look at that. In terms, uh, and then you have other causes that are less common, but those are like the ones that we really are looking at. So we will usually, uh, you're going to see that when we're wondering if there is a crystal arthropathy we're going to and if it's due to pseudo gout we're going to look at uh, those causes and we're going to check on uh, blood work some of those uh, uh, causes of uh, pseudo uh, gout and then in terms of treatment so this is really it's almost like the easy part right um or at least that's what i want to say that it's going to be easy uh, because i want to provide you hope um the first thing is that and usually you don't wait for us Usually, it responds to anti-inflammatory such as ibuprofen or uh, Advil or Aleve, right? And so you have a you have pain, and you're like, "What's going on?" You just take some ibuprofen and Aleve, and that's totally fine. That is fine if you don't have a kidney uh, issue. That is fine if you're young. If you're, you know, over 70, we recommend not to be on anti-inflammatory, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, because it can actually really cause issue after a certain age. So, for example, it can cause issue with your heart, can cause issue with your kidneys, and can cause issue, can cause issue with uh, uh, your um, stomach and can make some, some holes in your stomach, right? Uh, so, but that is considered the first line. So, uh, and said... We uh, have different type of instead, and we would, you know, work on that. We can also actually use colchicine, which is the same medication that we use for gout. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first line. And then because it is um, uh, sometimes associated with secondary causes, you're going to want to try to treat the secondary causes. All right. So that's actually important. So if you have hemochromatosis, you're going to try to treat that. If you have low magnesium, you're going to treat that. If you have kidney disorder, of course, you're trying to treat that as well and so on, et cetera. Uh, and if you have hyperparathyroidism, you're going to treat that as well. OK. And then sometimes you just have pseudogout or at least that's what we think you have. And so sometimes we have to treat you and said it's not enough or maybe you cannot uh, so, so, um, uh, tolerate it or colchicin is not enough and so that's when we usually uh, try to uh, another type of medication such as, as methotrexate and the reason behind it is that basically it's an inflammatory process and we're trying to decrease the inflammation all right so we're trying by the best uh, uh, of our ability to decrease this inflammation because inflammation is just not good for your joint but also for your whole system so this was you know in general, if you have an inflammatory arthritis that does this, where it's like a flare, then nothing, then a flare, then nothing, think crystal arthropathy, and then ask your primary care physician to test you for gout and pseudo gout. All right. So uh, this was this is it for uh, this um, little overview of what pseudo gout is. Uh, the patient that I was telling you about is now doing very, very well. There is absolutely no problem. We will follow very closely. Uh, but it's it's not usually a condition that causes so much issue uh, as long as you treat it. Uh, so that's really important. And it's pretty common. The other thing in terms of the diagnosis is that to diagnose it, you're going to have to do some x-rays in addition to the blood work that we were looking at. So the best diagnosis is to get some fluid from your joint and you're going to look and you're going to look at if there is any sort of crystal 
and so you're going to look for CPP decreased cell, okay? So that's calcium. Um, and then there's another way to diagnose it, or at least it's in conjunction, is that you can look for this calcium deposit on the x-rays. And so you're going to look at the x-rays of your wrist, uh, as well as the x-rays of your pubis, because in the middle it can grow, uh, it can deposit calcium, as well as on the knees. And even though that may not be the joint that are bothering you, and we will always do the x-ray of the joint that are bothering you. But even though it's not the joint that are not, uh, that th those other joints are not necessarily bothering you, there is calcium deposit that we can see. It's really nice when we can see this, all right? Then finally, you can do ultrasound. And ultrasound, you can actually see a double contour sign. I, I don't go too much in detail, but basically there's the contour seen by the cartilage. And then on top, there's this um, double contour. Uh, that's caused by the calcium deposit. And you can look at this on the on this joint, actually, that, I mean, on, on the joint, but it's really cool to see it on the uh, knuckles because that's not something that we usually see when we do x-rays. Um, so that's it for today. It was 10 minutes of review of solo gout. I want to uh, finish this episode telling you about this really cool opportunity on um, Friday, the 16th at 9 a.m. for Denver time, or that's 11 a.m. for Eastern time, so New York City time, uh, I am going to lead a workshop. And I call this workshop the Back to the Power. It's a joke, uh, Back to the Future. And why is it that we call it like Well, it's simple. It's because sometimes you don't want to necessarily go back to where you were before. Sometimes you want to go even at a better place. And so this Back to the Power uh, workshop is a way to teach you um, methods that are really helping to empower you, but it, they are also helping to decrease the inflammation in your body when you have a chronic inflammatory condition. So whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or psoriatic arthritis or pseudo gout or gout or any really any rheumatologic disorder, um, as long as you have some inflammation, we can help with our medications, of course, but we can also help with those techniques. And we're going to review the science behind all of those techniques. And uh, my hope is that we'll be able to do a little bit of a Q&A and that we'll also be able to do some of those exercises while we are online together. You can watch it live and ask questions on December 16 at 9 a.m. Denver time. And you have to just register. You can go on onabridgemd.com. You fill in the pop-up that comes in. You put your name, your email, and we will send you the link to, uh, to come into our um, uh, workshop. And otherwise, you can just watch the replay, but you also have to, uh, uh, I think you have to send and give us your email as well so we can send you the replay. Uh, anyway, so that's it for today. It's such a pleasure. Please, again, you know, reach out, send a email, uh, sorry, send this, uh, this episode if you think that it can help one of your colleague, one of your friend, uh, one of your family member. Sharing is caring. And I really am doing this um, to serve, to serve the community. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, time and a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.